And welcome. Hlavně prašáky, jmenuje se Jožim. Jožim s pážim, močálem se plíží. Jožim s pážim, k vesnici se plíží. Jožim s yes. pážim. Welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Review. I love Thursday. I love hanging out with the fam. That was wonderful timing, by the way, Dutch. The timing was pr- professional, dude. And tonight... It can't be any worse than it was last week. This is kind of like the way I was feeling today. First off, I love hanging out with you guys, period. We can take, if it, like, like last week's episode was not the greatest. In fact, it was probably the worst of the season. And yet, we had a absolute blast. And people that are like part of this community, they understand that. People that watch the Inside Star Citizen Review understand that really it's about hanging out and chilling and having a good time while we watch the Inside uh, Star Citizen show here. And we have a wonderful time together. So this week, it's labeled Old Cat, New Tricks. I'm not quite sure if that's referring to the Caterpillar. I'm not quite sure if we're talking about like the new things that the Caterpillar can do. I'm not quite sure exactly where we're going with this. But I cannot wait to watch it with you guys. So let's check it out. John turned around to me and told me that we were going to be putting the Bengal into the actual PU. And at first, I thought he was just pulling my leg because I mean, it's the Bengal. The by Bengal, the way, the biggest ship yes. that we're ever going to have in the P. By the way, a lot of people upset last week that Mark Gibson did the uh, 15 minute. No, it wasn't 15 minute, but half of the video was de- dedicated to the Hercules commercial. It really wasn't Mark's fault. Let's be fair about this. It wasn't Mark's pa- fault. We were talking about how it's basically like content management, like content management. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I will say this. The Bangle Man is sexy. We just watched a lot of Bangle footage this morning stream, and it was just fun to watch the Bangle in action. It is so fun watching the Bangle in fights with other players. It is really just the, it, you get to see the scale. You get to feel like the feels that you've been waiting forever for since you've been part of this project. When you see the ship out there, uh, it just gives you all types of BSG vibes. Uh, it gives you all types of like old school wing commander vibes. Uh, it just feels good when when you see it, and you're just like, "Wow!" You floating around, and then you think about server like, well, stability. What, just gonna appear, then fly away, or is it just in a post? Then he's like, "No, no, no! I, I want it to be like we had the javelin last year, where it comes in, it shoots, the players can try and fight it, and it flies around." I'm like, "Cool! That that's not a, a small." I don't know, D one. A little bit of a. No, the Vandal has the kingship, which is larger than the Bangle, and there's another one that's slightly larger than the Bangle as well. Uh, so there, there will be other other ships. Right, right. There, I think there's two other ships that are. Yeah, the Retribution, right? Triple. Thank you, dude. Yeah, yep. Yeah. A minor task on top of everything else that's going on. The Bangle itself had a lot of old issues with it. Compared to a lot of our newer ships, it didn't feel as good, it didn't look as good. So we saw this as a great opportunity to go in and just fix some of this old legacy oh things that we've done. My. I don't know, setup. Badash. Uh, so maybe. We, we I don't started know about by that. Good fixing question. The, the problems first of all. So the, the, the giant engines at the back, the whole thing was in a single thruster. So we, we started by cutting that out, making the actual nacelle part of the main ship geo, and then Damn. after making the ship geo, we then attached the actual thrusters Damn. as thrusters, so they work as thrusters. And then we found that it didn't have proper thruster placement because it was using the original IFCS Damn. system that didn't need it completely in IFCS 2. Obviously, it's, it's not fake, that it's real. So we had to actually go in and place new thrusters and rearrange some of the old ones just to get it to feel nice and to fly the way we'd expect it to. And after that, the, That's we have so to then look at the weapons. My shades down, the, man. This is the Bengal. It's got over 90 turrets to it that function, that fire, that fight <laughs> back, that you have to actually deal with. So we went through and we saw that a lot of... 90 turrets, man. There's a good conversation had on the Astro Pub. I believe it was the Astro Pub. Might have been Info Runners. Not quite sure. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I believe Paul was in it. Uh, Darsh and others and they were talking about blades and they were talking about slaves and i will say this like man over 90 turrets on this like you better be able to hire some type of npc crew that can do something yeah thank you dutch um and and if you don't that's that's a huge issue 
I mean, that's that's a big talk right now. Is it possible? Can they do it? Um, can they do it uh, and do it right? Um, I, they, <laughs> I mean, I can tell you, even with manning this, say say you had like 20% of players in this thing, you're still talking about a shit ton of players in here, and you're still going to need NPC crew. You're you're still gonna need a shit ton of NPC crew, uh, what, what javelin, uh, like you know, yeah, I mean, like think about all these larger ships like javelin and yeah, hell, even some of the frigates, you know, even like with an Idris, you know, like it, the the thing is, is you're going to have to have some type of automation. You gotta have some type of AI. You gotta have some type of NPC crew, man. You're not gonna be able to do this without it. And there's going to be major costs. There's absolutely going to be major costs with these. These are going to cost a lot of money, and they they damn well should. They damn well should. This shouldn't be something that people are just bringing out every single day for shits and giggles. You know, you know. I don't want conga lines of these motherfuckers. You're not going to see it. You're not going to see it like that. And and thank God. You're good. Thank God. <laughs> you guys. Of them were very nose heavy placement so we then completely changed the design of the location of the turrets which went through a couple of iterations to make sure everyone was happy with it it felt really weird for the entire carrier to look have at that. a complete front look nose at battery that. so look we at moved a lot that. of weaponry can we just hold on a second Let, let's do that again that was a wonderful pan shot showing a lot the of them were very the bangle, nose heavy man. placement so awesome. we then completely changed Great the design of shot. the location of the turrets which went through a couple of iterations to make sure look at how small it. this hammerhead is it felt really weird it's like a tiny little nothing ship against this bangle dude a complete front nose battery so <laughs> we moved a lot of the weaponry and a lot of the cover around so it was evenly distributed around wow. the ship for the, the missile turrets the battery. Wow. After that was all done, you know, those really small, minor, insignificant tasks, it was then a case of actually having it work. <laughs> because unsurprisingly, when you put the Bengal into the, the PU, it doesn't run very well because there's a lot of entities. It, it was a huge performance hit. Like, it, it was insane. Even of internally, course. we were seeing a, a massive performance drop. So yep. the next job was to try and optimize this, to actually get it to run in a decent way. If you have a look at any of the AI ships that the, the pirates use in the PU, there's physically a dude sat in the seat, which at the end of the day costs, everything has a cost involved with it. So Good. we started to explore a couple of different ways to do it. One route we took was to hide the whole thing behind this area so it just wouldn't render it, wouldn't call it, wouldn't draw any of it. And that, that gave us a lot of wins, but we also saw it as an opportunity to try and do something we haven't really done on ships before, which was Ooh, to have man. actual AI modules controlling the turrets. So we start playing about with that. We hit issues because we've never tried to implement it on this sort of scale. But after a lot of people doing a lot of hard work and playing about with it and making slight tweaks here and there, we ended up with the, the AI turret module, which was a huge, huge performance boost. And I spawned in a load of um, pirate Idrises to fight the thing. And it was just amazing watching all of the guns point in different directions and just fire everywhere. It Defensive Batteries did a wonderful job on size 9 torps from tallies that we watched about two weeks back, maybe a week and a half ago. And I will say, it was very realistic watching that. I don't know how many of you are here when we were watching the test that we, we saw the, all the tallies line up with size nine torpedoes and they shot at it and watching those batteries going off and listening to the sounds come from it again, those BSG vibes, man, and seeing the accuracy, man, it was actually really cool to watch. It was really, really fucking cool to watch. It looked amazing. And then the missiles were coming in it was shooting down all the missiles everywhere. And I probably spent a good half an hour just trying to actually hit it with a missile. There's just that much gunfire that it just, yeah, it looks great. It, it's hard to describe how cool it looks when it's actually Fucking firing a, man. a, a Fucking group of people. Cool, man. The impact of seeing the Bengal working flying around was just incredible for people. And <laughs> right the Bengal is something I've been working on for quite a long time for Squadron 42. But once it's in the PU, people can fly around it and just 
take in the sheer size of it. It's oh, just incredibly how would affect the stability. Huge. And having an event like Invictus meant that we push specific tech and specific things in a way that we're going to be used later down the line. So that's a step forward towards having unmanned like AI talk. turrets on ships. We learn better ways to optimize the way we actually have AI crew inside the ship because everything we do can be reused. We learn from it, we improve from it, and it, it can help everything as a whole. It's a lot of work, and we, we as developers spend a lot of time focusing on really minor details, and sometimes we we, we just tunnel on little things and think, well, is this, is this huge time I'm spending on this one little thing really worth it? But Absolutely. then when we see it in the community and seeing how much people love it and how wild they go for it, Absolutely. just seeing their responses to it, it just completely lifts my spirits up every time. So Absolutely. worth it in the end, once we actually got it in. Really, really cool. What's up, Al Andros? Invictus has quickly become one of the major highlights of our year, as well as a, a fine addition to the Star Citizen experience overall. And the Bengal was just one part of everything that goes into making the event so special each and every year. Now, from looking back, let's look ahead. <laughs> Horrible. It's sprint report time, so let's get to it. Starting uh, overall, we 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 uh, posted a poll on our com uh, community site here on DG three sixty, and uh, over fifty two percent of those polled. I think they ended up uh, having like three or four hundred uh, people that voted said that they had a good time with Invictus and Free Fly. I still think they need to do a better job with streamlining it so that people who are new can go in and know exactly what they're getting into. I think there needs a be, uh, to be a little bit more streamlining happening. But um, I love these free fly events. I love any time they can take a, a, an event and put it in the game and it feels real. It feels like you're in something that's alive. It's cool seeing other people around looking at the showcase of ships. Uh, and, and you're like, oh, cool. Like I, I literally feel like I'm I'm in a showroom and I'm, I'm looking at ships and other people are looking at them as well. Some of them are new. Some of them are old. Some of their, some people are just there to have a good time, hang out. Uh, it, I, I like that. I love that. I hope there's more of that in the game as the game progresses and becomes more of a reality. I hope they have like festivals on different planets during the year, like, you know, like build into the lore, you know, Microtech has a festival or, or, you know, like you're in any system. Uh, you know, Banu based system. If you can land on any of the planets there would be awesome. And you have like Banu festivals. I think there was some type of game that the Banu created that they, they have championship games with. I remember reading in the lore, it'd be so great if once a year, like there was something planned on that where it just happens. Like it's just something that happens. It's something that's programmed to happen. Uh, there's like a countdown to it and it's like a festival. It's like an event. It's like a party in the game. Banu Mud Wrestling. Things off, members of the UI team have completed a sprint porting many of the transit signs found throughout the Persistent Universe to use a newer and more robust version of our building blocks tech. Now, as with everything that makes this transition, it not only allows for easier swapping of various styles and themes without having to change the underlying information, but it's also far more efficient and less resource intensive. Good. Leading to performance gains all over when every little bit Good. helps. This is a small sampling, but the team is looking forward to adding more and varied styles to the various interactions players encounter throughout the verse. All right. Meanwhile, the character team is close to completing work on the Grey Cat armor that was revealed alongside the Grey Cat Rock DS earlier this year. Now, while it's designed. Robocop, yo. Robocop. I want that to specifically support mining operations fashion forward citizens will still find a lot to like here whoever said support roles couldn't look badass obviously never worked for our oh, character team oh snap hammer dookie nothing's impossible Thank you, Hammer, for that support, bro. Bringing in the Tom Cruise DJ. S-T-A-B-I-L-I-T-A-I. Well, you know what that means. It's time to drink. Stability. Can somebody get Alondro's hip to what we do, what we've been doing for the past two years? This is called the Inside Star Citizen Review. I think I've even been doing it longer than that. And what we do is we chill out every Thursday night, and we have a good time. Alondro's, welcome to the good time. Welcome to the fun. 
<laughs> and thank you, Hammer. <laughs> Apollo. All right, the leather armor does not keep you alive in space, but it looks fucking cool while I die. <laughs> This is this is 30th century leather though. You don't understand 30th century leather, Apollo. I think you need to do a video about 30th century leather. You understand? <laughs> this is coming from space cows, man. You know the space cow with all the eggs underneath it. This is this is space cow leather. You you understand? Space cow leather is slightly different, dude. Slightly different. I mean, come on, Apollo. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I could be. I want that space whale blubber suit, dude. Props teams have recently begun their explorations, developing the various chips and ports necessary to support the upcoming hacking gameplay currently scheduled for Alpha 315. Now, while there will be a variety of high and low tech offerings, these were the, the conversation starters, if you will, to help us determine which direction visually we wanted to go in. They even created a handy animatic to see how the pieces all fit together, along with a sneak peek at the hacking visual interface that we're gonna see a Ooh. lot more of in ISC next quarter. Oh shit, make this make this a mini game, dude. Make this fucking shit a mini game. And and make this so that people have to literally be skilled hackers. Like, let's get this shit on. Let's get this shit on so that like some people don't want to deal with this, right? Some people don't even want to deal with this shit, right? Which is perfect, man. Do you understand how perfect that is? Because you're going to have people that love to do this shit. You're going to have people that are better than other people doing this shit. You're talking about a hacking profession, man. You're talking about a hacking profession. Let's do it. Now, recently, you've seen the current exterior progress of the... Let's make that shit complex. Let's let's make it really complex too. Let's 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 make it like coding. Let's make it so that like most people don't even want to fucking get involved in it, right? And that those people that like the coding and they are into the coding will be professional at it and they'll get be paying them creds hardcore. Let's make it really hardcore. Let's not go easy mode on the hacking. You know, we can do the little puzzle Mario bullshit. You want to do the Mario 64 puzzle bullshit? Okay, you can do that. But let's take it another step up. Let's even increase it. Let's make it a, a lot harder <laughs> so that the hacking itself is very specialized for a very small niche group of people that are gamers that like this so that they can get paid buku bucks and that you have to want to have a hacker in your team. Let's make it that way. Can we do that? Can we strive for that as the end goal? We'll start baby steps. We'll start Mario 3D modeling kind of hacking. Okay, all right, all right. We got our little mini games that we can play on our mobile phone. All right, all right, all right, all right. You want to start that out? 1.0 hacking, baby mode. You want embryo hacking? You want embryo hacking? You want toddler hacking? Do you want to? Do you want to raise that hacking child up into a to a teen, to an adolescent? Do you want to watch as they graduate and then? move off on their own until they're an adult. Yeah, that's kind of hacking I'm talking about. That's the kind of hacking I want. <laughs> Aegis Redeemer during Invictus. So let's take a look inside at the continuing work on the interior with a look at gray box progress <laughs> on the man turret. Hacking fetus. Remote turret bay. Well, I don't know if, I don't even know why I say the things I do. Oh. Vehicle teams have also begun looking at the Constellation dash controls as they prepare to convert What's it up, to utilize the updated interactive cockpit experience. Now, before you jump into the comments, the physical buttons you see here are just temporary placeholders as the intention is still very much for this <laughs> RSI stock. <laughs> Dutch. Dutch says, DG wants the highest difficulty. After you finish the in-game hack, the FBI will show up at your door. <laughs> Work to maintain its touchscreen holographic interface whenever possible. In addition to that, 
the Ares Starfighter, nice. currently on the public roadmap scheduled for an Alpha 315 release, is making its way through the white box phase of our ship pipeline. After recent work on the Mercury Star Runner and the Hercules Star Lifter, I've no doubt this will become another fantastic addition to the Crusader lineup when it arrives towards the end of this year. And since we're on Crusader, let's take a look at these final art images of the Crusader shuttle that will whip zoom players around from platform to platform when it arrives in the upcoming Alpha 3. That's cool. That's cool. That's like the the very that's like the tram at uh, Micro at Microtech, man. Or or on Lauraville. That's that's cool. Cause we got sky based uh, city, man. And you, now you got a sky based tram. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Three fourteen. And before you ask, no, you cannot as well. <laughs> well, maybe if you ask John Crew really really nicely, that could change one day. Now I'm absolutely not empowered to say this, uh, but you should ask him anyway, because I really won't. Moving along, last time we took our first look at Horizon Limits. by Night, so let's continue that journey with these images from the lighting team as they can. Oh my god, I cannot wait. You know, a lot of people, like, they're like, oh, a new place doesn't matter. Dude. Dude. I love new places, man. I mean, the explorer in me loves new places. I, I need new places, man. I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. Continue their work creating an atmosphere that's truly unique from its daytime companion. I'll just let these images speak for themselves. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Invictus is more than just a chance for players to experience our capital ships up close and personal. It's also an opportunity for our developers to push needed technologies to the forefront in ways that will benefit the entire Persistent Universe going forward. That Grey Cat should feel free to make as many industrially themed armors as they'd like. And that between its stylish ships, the shuttles, and the landing zone... I mean, I'm not much of a Grey Cat dude, obviously, because they really don't have anything out there I think is worth uh, anything. But their armor's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Crusader is fast becoming a fan favorite manufacturer. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. And the Maldi tool. And the Maldi tool. Thanks, Mel. All right. Much better than last week's, although you can't, you can't, I mean, like anything would have been better than last week's. Listen, if you're watching on YouTube, you missed that first level energy. And I feel bad for you because you're watching the highlight. You're missing all this. You're missing the fam. You're missing the action. All right. And you're going to miss this bonus, uh, bonus footage. You're just going to miss it. And I feel bad for you, but it's okay. I want to thank you for watching this on YouTube. Don't forget to like it, and don't forget to come by live. If you're in the EU, I'm so sorry. I know I've been doing these very late lately. It's because of my schedule. I'll try and get a few in that are, are a little bit earlier for our EU audience. We're global, so I don't want to exclude them. I love you guys. <clears throat> uh, but if you're here with us on stream right now, you're in for some fun. So we're going to end this for our YouTube audience and we're going to continue it on for our Twitch streaming audience because we got that first level energy.